Hi everybody, welcome to another Beatles update. I'm going to be not showing too much stuff here. Uh, this is stuff that's been laying around here for a while that I haven't shown yet in other videos. There's some magazines, there's an 8-track tape, and there are a few vinyl records. So, uh, not a big update, but let's go. I'm going to start with a series here that's been coming out a lot lately. This is a, a limited edition clear vinyl. A lot of clear vinyl uh, bootlegs coming out. This one here is the Beatles Blackpool in Paris, 1964-1965. And, um, you know, some of this material I have already, it's particularly the, the Paris show. Uh, but I don't have the other stuff on record, which is interesting to have. And, like I say, the vinyl on these, kind of nice. Clear, clear wax there. Um, I think there's a mistake here on the, the song listings as far as the venue that's listed here. Well, side one might be okay. Uh, it says here, there are ten tracks. The first five were supposed to be from uh, the July 19th, 1964 Blackpool show. And then the remaining five songs on side A are Blackpool show from August 1st, 1965. So it's nice to have that on record. Now, here's where I think the mistake is. On side B, it says um, they got uh, some tracks here. The first uh, seven are supposedly from Paris, 1964. As far as I'm, I'm, I know, they're from Paris, 1965. So I think that's a mistake. It's stuff we've heard already, of course. <laughs> All this we've heard already, but I should say stuff that's out already on uh, vinyl. Uh, then we have tracks eight and nine that say Stockholm, 1964. So... There you have it. And, you know, the whole thing with these releases is um, I, I like collecting them if the cover is nice, if the cover is different. I basically buy for the cover. Uh, or a case like this, it also helps that I don't have the stuff on vinyl already on some kind of uh, release. But, you know, uh, I'm tired of buying the same old stuff I have over and over and over. That is, uh, as, uh, if the cover is not interesting or the cover is not significantly different, I won't bother. So it's got to be all new material that I don't have yet in some way. Or interesting looking packaging. This here is another one in this series back in the USA. Um, and on this particular album, you have Ed Sullivan stuff like, uh, I gotta say, like, you know, I don't know about you folks, but I'm so tired of hearing Ed Sullivan show stuff. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I enjoy, still enjoy the 65 show, but the 64 shows, I'm so tired of them. But uh, it says here we got this uh, Ed Sullivan show from New York um, from February 64. We got the Ed Sullivan show from Miami, February 64. Then we got the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, it says track 8. There's one track here, Twist and Shout, from the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles of 64. You know, we just, meanwhile, we got the Hollywood Bowl. It just came out officially. So then we go to side B and we, and we get... Uh, Tracks 1 to 5 are from the Philadelphia Convention Hall from September of 64, which is cool. And then we got tracks, uh, it's, a, it's a 6 and 8, I don't know what happened with 7, Hollywood Bowl again, 6, 7, and 8. You know, three more songs from the Hollywood Bowl over again. But I, I think their songs, uh, like If I Fell, I don't think If I Fell is available on the official release of Hollywood Bowl, so that's different. And, you know, I could show all of, of the, the records here, but... They're all the clear vinyl, but what's different on them are the labels. Okay, and I should say that uh, I went ahead and did something I don't usually do. The I changed to the paper sleeves. I remember, oh my god, paper sleeves, no, you're going to ruin the records. I don't buy that. Just take the care of them. Make sure they're not dirty. Make sure they're not torn. And I think if they're torn over here around the circle and you try to jam a record down, you could scratch it, but you handle it with care. I think it's greatly exaggerated when people say uh, there's problems with paper sleeves. But anyway, they didn't come with these paper sleeves. They came in a uh, very a clear kind of plastic wrap that I think is adhering to the records. I, so I think that over time that might be bad for the records. That, you know, I don't, I like, you know, clear sleeves. I like rice paper sleeves. I like special MoFi sleeves. But uh, the ones that are kind of like these plastic, that kind of like stick to it with the heat, I, I, I'm not wild about that. Now I saved, out of the three records, I saved the, the best cover for last. 
and there it is. I mean, uh, I'm sorry there's glare I can see on the shrink wrap here. I wish uh, I could avoid the glare, but Beatles in Melbourne and, and Tokyo. Uh, now, I can't think of how many times I have this material, but this is a good example where I don't care if I have this material already. I want this for this spectacular cover. I mean, that's just uh, a knockout cover. That's them performing one of the shows in uh, Tokyo. And, you know, I have, you know, I have the video of this and the video of the White Suits concert in Tokyo, the video of the Black Suits concert in Tokyo. So, in that regard, it's funny, I don't play the records very often on these anyway, because if I'm going to to want to see or hear the, the Tokyo show, it's going to be on the video. I'd rather watch the, the DVD that I have of the show. I'm not much of a concert guy. I'd rather watch the concert visually and hear it rather than just play audio of it. That's just me. But uh, on this particular recording, it says uh, side A is all from Melbourne, Australia. You know, now, of course, um, I already have that, I should say. You know, I have a whole album just dedicated just solely to the Melbourne show in Australia. I don't really uh, have, have this as anything new. I've got that on record already. But, you know, again, this cover, I'm not going to pass this up. This is a nice museum piece. And uh, side B is the Tokyo Japan concert. But the thing about it that's interesting is... I haven't played the record yet, uh, but it says it's got nine tracks here. It's missing the first track, which was rock and roll music. You know, I don't know what's up with that, but uh, it starts with She's a Woman on side B, and uh, there's no rock and roll music, as there should be, which is kind of bizarre. So I don't know if it's included there, but they just didn't list. There's a lot of errors on here on the packaging. So, And the label, as you would expect by now, is, you know, you know the cover, nice label. And clear vinyl. So yeah, so uh, I passed a few of these up. I mean, I, I had seen other copies of this series, but it's more of the Hamburg stuff. And I mean, again, if the cover was a knockout cover on those particular couple of releases I saw, I would have also gotten those. But uh, the cover wasn't—they weren't anything to to wail about. So what the heck with it. I didn't bother. Okay, now we're going to go to the 8-track tape, and I do not have an 8-track player, at least not yet. I don't know if I ever will. I don't really care if these uh, don't play, you know what I mean? This is the, uh, obviously, John and Yoko Double Fantasy album, and I really don't, uh, as I say, mind if these don't even play. Uh, this one looks like it's in good shape, though, but uh, I just buy these for collectible purposes, and that's what I do. I'm trying to get the whole series of Beatles and solo Beatles on a track. So, that was nice. Okay, now i got a few magazines to show you um, that I got for very cheap. Uh, here's one called McCartney, Beetle on Wings, and it's from 1976. I, I mean, I... I figured it was because that's the touring year, but I just wanted to make sure it didn't come out a year later or a year early. And on the back side there, we've got the Beatles' Yellow Submarine. And just to give an idea of some of the photos here, um, I'm going to go into the center where there's Paul dead. No, Paul is not dead. Maybe one of these days I'll shut those people up and make a video, but I don't know when. He's alive. Anyway, Paul dead. How absurd. It's people who still believe that. You see their, their dumb posts and comments here and there and everywhere on the Internet. They really believe it. Nice photos. Yeah, some of those people, they really just can't get enough. We have conspiracy theorists out there that thrive on that kind of thing. They just love never being satisfied in life with things being as they are. They have to imagine that everything is a secret conspiracy. You know, it makes them very excited to find things to... Get up in arms about. Anyway, we also got some uh, some of the other Beatles here. You did a picture of Linda over there, pretty young on the top there.
Yeah, okay. I spend more time looking at the pictures myself than... Uh... Anyway, the beetle in America. Okay, so that's a nice coverage of his touring. Then we got uh, one here. Time Magazine. McCarty comes back. And uh, I like that cover. It's from May 31st, 1976. And there's not much in the way of photos inside on this one. I mean, it's, it's mostly for an article. McCarty comes back. These are very uh, poor condition, so just trying to be careful with the magazine here. The cover, I don't want the cover to become detached. There's a lot of attention given in these magazines to Paul and Linda, the way they have their family with their kids on tour. Now, for all you people that think that Paul McCartney is dead, she's their little girl. Oh, jeez. Anyway, my Archie Bunker impression. I mean, look at this picture. That, that's Paul circa 1964. What are you talking about? Look at that. Oh, yeah, that, that's that's a fake Paul. It's William Campbell. All right, anyway, I love that cover. That's really just a nice picture of People magazine there. Paul, from June 7th, 1976. And, you know, the inside, again, we've got uh, attention given to... Paul and the kids, Linda, there we go, and it's interesting on the side there, you see uh, Linda's first daughter, Heather, looking like the miserable forgotten stepchild, unfortunately, I think she really felt like she was like not one of the family, I don't know, I could be wrong there, but, <clears throat> uh, the Lord must, <laughs> I doubt it says, what does it say there, I'm going to be reading this backwards, the Lord must want the Beatles to fly again. He gave the McCartney's wings. Anyway, the last magazine I'm going to show is going to be Us Magazine from, this is from March 1978. A lot of people will recognize this particular cover, really a nice picture. It was included as a poster in the London Town album with uh, Denny Lane kind of cut out of the side for this particular picture. And uh, The Private Life of Paul and Linda McCartney. And uh, there's a rare shot of Paul later on with the mustache. And again, uh, the pictures here, not many. It's more for the article. Getting the emphasis on the new baby, James. And, uh, you gotta hand it to Paul and Linda, man. Bringing up, you know, kids uh, while on the road and bringing them up pretty normal, considering. So, anyway, that's it. And uh, I hope you had some fun with this video. And Paul's very much alive. Jeez.